In this video I'm looking at preparing a compact flash card for use in the Atari Falcon. Uh, as we well know, a lot of the older machines would come with your old 2.5 inch uh, hard drives there. In actual uh, Falcon I've got over there, one that I had actually had oil leaking out of it, so it was well and truly on its last legs. Uh, this particular one came out of a, an Amiga 1200, hence the uh, different cradle there, but um, this machine here did originally have a, I think it was a 120 megabyte drive. So uh, the plan is now to update it with a 8 gig SanDisk compact flash card. Um, I've actually done this machine previously, but I've put in a fresh card just to illustrate uh, the process. But as you can see there, um, I've kept the old cradle in place. Um, Put a, just a sheet of cardboard there for insulation and just use cable ties to um, stop any movement of the uh, replacement. IDE to compact flash adapter in the card itself. Now there's a few available on the market. Um, let's see. So these are available for a couple of dollars on eBay. You've got this one here which has the uh, switch here on the on the lower right hand side there. Um, that one's fairly straightforward. Leave the switch on or the jumper on and it's in master mode, IDE master. Um, leave it open, it's an IDE slave. Uh, for my setup I'm only ever going to have one device so I'm happy just to keep um, the adapter in master, IDE mode. Uh, you've got some other ones which are available that Sadly aren't as well uh, labelled. It's where the jumper's on the left hand side there. It's a three pin header, so it talks about for master slave operation, leave it in, um, or specifically master really, leave the, the header, uh, the jumper on pins one and two. Um, for your information, that's the two there closest to the connector. So that's the one that's in there currently. Um, also, I've had luck with uh, the SD card adapters. Similarly, these are available for a couple of dollars as well. I think overall, depending on how much storage you get, because of the cost of compact flash cards, sometimes it is cheaper to go down this route here. In terms of the installation, uh, pin 1 should already be marked on the IDE header port on the motherboard itself. So, aligning the IDE cable pin 1 with the uh, red wire there. Um, we then connect it to the IDE to compact flash adapter. Um, you can't see it on that one, but if we look at this one here, pin 1 is marked with a triangle there. So if you maintain alignment with that red wire and pin number 1 on the main board, you should be right to go. When it comes to choosing the media you want to use, uh, you can't go wrong with SanDisk, especially the um, yeah, extreme versions, you get quite good throughput as well. Uh, the TOS that is contained in the Atari Falcon, version 4, um, and if you can get it, you get version 4.04, .04, which has uh, had some bugs removed as well. Um, in particular, likes or is capable of supporting petitions up to one gigabyte each so in this case given that it's a 18 gigabyte card we can have eight petitions um, but TOS by default will support up to 14 so you can make good use of um, the space that's available so with the SanDisk being my preferred option um, I have had mixed results with this no-name brand that's quite cheaply available on eBay it's worked in an Amiga 1200 that I've got. Uh, I just tried to use it before the machine wouldn't even boot up with it. So uh, buyer beware, it may or may not do the trick. Um, however, with the SD card, basically anything I've thrown at that, uh, this one's got, uh, let's see what brand's in there. Any, any brand that I've thrown at it, it's Alexa, um, has worked fine in the Atari Falcon. 
Now obviously to prepare the compact flash card we need to have some software available. As I just briefly showed there, I've got the fairly popular HD driver. Um, I can't remember the name of the author, but um, nor can pronounce his name anyway, but it's um, a Google away and it has a high level of um, compatibility, low memory footprint, so it doesn't use that much RAM, and um, good performance as well. So typically I've got the boot disk in the uh, floppy drive at the moment. Um, as you probably would have noted, it's actually a, a, a GoTech drive in there, but the drive images or the disk image is in there. So when we boot, um, and what's common with all the hard drive drivers is that the auto folder will contain a driver that will try and recognize the hardware. I'll quickly point out the SAM disk has been recognized at boot time, but of course there's no partitions there and we can verify that by simply trying to install some devices. We get nothing. So now we'll open up the utility disk. The one we want to run is HDDR Util. Okay, now the partitioning utility has finished loading. We can now see on the IDE bus we have the sand disk available. So very quickly, we can just go to media, petition. I'm just going to put something very quickly in there. Um, so now we'll go to media, petition. Now what you might note is a lot of these cards by default come formatted for Windows. So um, the best way to check this is often you'll see and compatibility that Windows has already been checked. So we can get rid of that one, that one. We are doing this for TOS after all. Okay. Put an arbitrary value in there. We just put nine. So we have nice 910 megabyte petitions. Click on OK. This petitioning scheme is only valid for TOS 4 or Magic and Mint. That's fine. We're going with 4. Continue. Are you sure? This takes not long at all. You can see some all well, the ID activity light there flashed on briefly. Click on OK. And we're going to go with the recommendation that we should reboot. Again, you can see the light flick there as TOS just checks for its presence. Now we can see the device is still noted, but you can see there's more drives C through to K there have been created. So the next thing we want to do is be able to boot off the hard drive itself. So we run this utility again. So this utility is available for £10, I believe. £10? No, I think it's €10, Euro, my mistake. Um, and I highly recommend it. I've used it on um, my Falcons here and it uh, definitely does the trick. Okay, so now we've come back in and TOS has now assigned a drive letter to each of the petitions. So you can see here it's designated uh, a little dot next to C, D and E. These are the ones that it says that it can boot from. So we're just going to highlight C drive and we're going to go install driver. It's been installed. Now what we'll do is reboot. Now you can see boot time was very quick and came up with a default desktop. And that's because we booted off the hard drive this time. If 
That only boots off A if one isn't present. So now install devices. You'll see all the other partitions are recognized as well. So for now if we save the um, desktop, next time we reboot it'll come straight in here. And if you open up C drive, it'll have a couple of files in there. One is the hard drive driver itself and the other one's just your um, desktop configuration file. And then you can work on there from to, to build it up and add more files to it. Just to show you a quick copy operation, I'm now going to copy all the files from the driver disk onto the e-petition. So write time's quite fast, as you can see there, and whisper quiet. So now the copy's finished, we have all the files from our A drive on our E drive now. And as you may have observed earlier, loading up this utility took uh, quite a bit of time. It is nearly 290K. So now when we run it off the compact flash card, before I've even finished my sentence, it's loaded. So it's much better to run from there. Another alternative to the HD driver software are the freely available ICD drivers. The preferred version is 6.5.5. Again, you can get a disk image or copy of the required files to copy to a disk. Um, you put it in and when it boots, you'll get this. Again, you can see the compact flashcards being recognised. However, I've started from scratch. There's no petitions on this. So it's really as simple as going to the ICD format utility and running that. You'll see regardless of whether it's IDE or um, SCSI, it'll always refer to scanning for SCSI devices. As you can see there, compact flashcards been um, recognized, click on continue. Now we don't need to do low level formats, so it's generally for the older school um, SCSI drives. So straight to petitioning. Now interestingly enough, even though I have an 8 gig compact flash card in there, even with uh, the TOS 4.04 settings, it's still only recognizing approximately two gigabytes of storage space. And by default, it's only created 33 megabyte size petitions, which um, aren't very useful. So let's just see what we can do with the max setting. No, it seems to stick to that. Um, again, going with split, uh, typing in nine once again. And it's, of course, divided the um, space that it can see into the required number of petitions. So I'll just commit that change. Now, of course, it does a bad sector check first. This can take some time, so I'll stop the video shortly. But uh, generally, your compact flash media is quite good. I think the, the bad sectors, so to speak, are, are, are checked and marked internally. After some time, you'll see that the hard drive has been prepared correctly. Click on OK. We won't do a printout. Now exit. Wait for the reboot. You 
see some petitions now have been created. You can see the size there is as we set up. The next step is to install the driver on our C drive. So in this case, we run the HD Util program again. Click on the boot option. We want to boot from C, it looks fine. Click OK. That's the boot driver we want to use. Exit out, check our C drive, now you can see the boot driver has been installed, now we'll reboot. And as you can see there, it's booted by default off the C drive. I hope you found this video useful. Of course, um, now we have so many drives available, I'll make another video on how to fill it up with data. Um, quite a few methods involved there, so I'll go through each of those. Thanks for watching.